Hey guys, welcome to Mission Impossible on the N64. I have done every type of video on this game except for a standard Let's Play, and I kind of have an urge to replay it again, mostly to hear the music, because oddly enough, the music is phenomenal in this game. Um, so, this is going to be a very quick Let's Play just to kind of finish this game off, because I have an urge to play it, and it's very quick, so it shouldn't take long. Probably not even seven parts long, I would think. Good morning, Mr. Bell. International weapons dealer Basil Prokosch has set up operations at an abandoned World War II submarine base in Lundquist. Our information shows he is planning to upset peace in the Gulf by selling 12 medium-range missiles to an enemy country. Your mission, Jim, should you decide to accept it, is to sabotage the submarine transporting the missiles. As always, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed, the Secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is, once again, overdub the PlayStation 1 music. Like, I'm going to mute the N64 music track and put the PlayStation songs over top of it. I've also changed the plugin compared to all the videos I've done on this game before, so you can see the fuzz effect when I switch between characters and stuff. Um, yeah, it's Glide N64. It actually works pretty well compared to all the other plugins with this game, which my long play was recorded with a different plugin, but this one should finally look the way it's supposed to, give or take. But yeah, this game is surprisingly fun. I love these little spy missions, just like Goldeneye, how you can just replay that over and over again. These missions are kind of the same, despite the clunk. Hey, who are you? Hi, I'm Fred, and I'm looking for my dog. My dog, wait a second, something's wrong here. You're not gonna get anybody, chum. Hear that nuance? Hold on, listen for it again. See, look at that echo, man. That's not on the N64. But yeah, it's good stuff. So this whole game is revolved around the face maker, and you would think if every mission uses it, it would get old, but that is not the case. At least to me. So we got our excuse for the errand. I'm playing on possible. Um, so just give it to this guy. His name is Boris. You find that out if you talk to the other guys with your disguise. But yeah, listen to this music, man. How could you not love it? There's John Clutter. We gotta jump on the truck with him. As soon as this guy starts it up. No use talking to him. That'll just stall time more. But I'm gonna do missions one and two, because mission one is basically a tutorial. Yeah, it's really good. Michael Pummel did a phenomenal job on this game. It's kind of one of those weird games that's not so great, it's very rough around the edges, but it's kind of a hidden gem, at least musically. And if you know anything about me, I like the music in video games, I kind of put maybe a little bit too much importance on it. And it's enough to kind of push a bad game into being a relatively good game, perhaps perfectly describing this game, I don't know. Alright, ice hit, this is mission one, and now we're in stage two of it, and that's it, and then it's off to mission two, which is the most memorable mission of the game, once again, probably because of level one and the music that accompanies it, at least on the N64. Which is a very odd thing that they did. They re they switched around the music tracks between the N64 and PlayStation 1. Yeah, we gotta find the mines. Your mask is falling into shreds. Shoot, must be the cold. Guess I'll have to do without. Let me come with you, I can give you cover. Too risky! I'll go as planned. But yeah, that's another thing, the PlayStation 1 has terrible voice acting that silences the music, and it's just so bad. So N64 is the way to go, but musically, PlayStation's the way to go. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds, or rather, the one where I, the video I did that I was not talking. It's probably the best of both worlds. However, it's not because I wasn't using this plugin, so it was still visually not correct. Understood. Understood. Roger. There, that's better. Roger. <laughs> I love this game is just oddly a lot of fun. So we got the mines. Let's go give them the clutter. Yeah, this is this is the the song's about to get good. Perk up your ears. There's a little nuance bit that you can't hear on the N64 that's about to start. Probably right as I go to talk to John over here. 
Yeah, here it comes. I don't know, man. I just love that little nuanced bit there. This the part leading up to the Mission Impossible thing. It's like, Alright, let's place the mine on the boat. There, that's better. Ah, <laughs> uh, Ethan, you're silly. I like this snow outfit, though. I always thought this was kind of neat. No truck. Alright, we're good. And then there's this guard. This game is actually surprisingly super easy to control with a GameCube controller. I remember somebody was commenting on my long play in the other video I did and thought I was using a mouse. Well, no way. I cannot stand mouse keyboard controls with any kind of game. Unless it's a um, real-time strategy game where you're something like uh, Age of Empires or whatever. Here comes that little nuanced bit. But there you go. Mission 1 is complete. You don't get a cheat for doing that one, though, because it's kind of like a tutorial. But here it is, Embassy Function, everybody's most memorable level of this game. And this part of the game, they don't play any music, actually. Air. Selling fresh air from the makers of Breathe Free. Makers of air for eternity. That's something from, uh, whose line is that any anyway or something? Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Former KGB Linex officer Alexander Golitsyn, now working black market intelligence under official cover, has abducted one of our top computer experts, IMF agent Candace Parker, and has stolen one half of the CIA NOC list she was carrying, naming all of our non-official cover agents in Eastern Europe. This list is divided into two encoded halves. The half Golitsyn has is useless without the other half, which is stored at CIA headquarters in Langley. Candace is now imprisoned in the Russian embassy in Prague, where they are trying to decode the list, probably believing she has the key to the code. We also know they have a powerful computer there and are probably using it to try to break the code. Special Agent Robert Barnes was deployed in disguise to free Candace and make it look like Golitsyn's fault. This is so as to discredit him with Moscow. However, we've heard nothing from Barnes since, and we suspect he's been caught. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to penetrate during tomorrow night's embassy function. Find Candace, copy the list, destroy the computer, and escape with Candace and Barnes, if he's still As alive. As always, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. <laughs> On a plane? That's, uh, okay, whatever. I'm not going to read this crap. Nobody cares. Ethan Hunt, Jim Phelps, Sarah Davies, Dieter Harmon, Jack Kiefer, Robert Barnes, and Candace Parker in Mission Impossible. Here it is, man, the embassy song, this piano track. If it does not get stuck in your head after watching this video, I don't know what to tell you. Get out of my way, buddy. You gotta talk to this guy twice so he walks away. She's playing along even though she's our teammate. I think a movie star. Ethan Hunt is a movie star, but this is not Tom Cruise. Alright, walk away, chum. Even the mission track is so awesome. Alright, now she's got the face maker, but we can't get caught taking it. So we gotta wait for this little dude to walk away. As soon as it goes around the wall, we should be good. All right, Sarah, let's have it now. <laughs> I like how they grab things so clunkily in this game. Clunkily. Smoke detectors, or no, smoke uh, emitters in the vents. There you go. I always thought this was cool, too, that the way the piano slowly gets louder and louder as you approach where it is. Dun, 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 dun. It's so good, dude. This piano track is phenomenal.
You can't tell me that's not awesome, dude. Oh, it gets stuck in my head. Yeah, I'm not a Hollywood actor. Give me your score. This lady's trying to kill us. Get away from me, you stupid scarlet woman. This song is good, too. The whole point, since we're going to be getting more into the mission track and less of the piano, um, we had to get the drink and the poison from the bartender who was basically on our team in order to poison this guy so we can knock him out and steal his face. But that girl in the red is on to us because she's a killer. <laughs> this always cracked me up too. The way they just drag like a cartoon. I always take his face and then keep punching him because the sound effects of the punches are funny to me. I don't know. I always liked it as a kid. That's such a cool uh, animation, too. You're done, buddy. Who's got the better face now? But see how you can see the male and the female things on the doors in my long play in the other video? Oh, she's right here. Well, this is an impossible objective, but I'll, she's right here. Might as well do it. She's out to murder Ethan. And this is where she figures out that it's you. And this blowpipe never works. I'm gonna try, but it doesn't work. I think you gotta hit her before she opens the door. If she opens the door, the blowpipe's not gonna work. That is what I've come to find in my many times replaying this game. Yeah, see? Right in between the chest and it didn't work. Good night, sweetheart. And then drag her like a cartoon. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny to me. Now, I won't punch her like I did in the long play that got all people riled up. I just did it for the sound effects, so I punched him some more. There you go. Here comes that piano again. Get ready for the song to permeate your skull bone for all eternity. Let's do it, warehouse time. I'm coming for you. In the face. This this area is kind of neat too. I like the music here too. It's awesome. I would say hands down the music is the best feature of this game. And <laughs> the fact that a headshot is always a delayed backflip. I said that in my little review, which I wish I could. I wish you could edit a video so that it maintains its views and recommendation settings. It's nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking. Looking good, Ethan. Look at this guy wigging out over here. Delayed backflip. Gotcha! <laughs> I love those little noises he says. Like, what's he gonna say here? Oh, he didn't say anything. Normally he's like, there it is. Oh, whatever. But yeah, what I'm saying is, um, I wish I could go back and edit my review of this and, like, trim down the music files that I played for way too long in it. And just otherwise make the review better, but without having to start from zero views and everything. Because then it's not going to show up in uh, recommended feeds or anything. But anyway, I just got the exit key from that guard back there. This is, once again, on possible, not impossible difficulty. So... If I don't delete that uncompressed playlist of this game, where I did not commentate over the game, but I did dub over the PlayStation songs, Got it. very much like I'm doing here, um, 
I did play on impossible difficulty there. However, given the unpopularity of that playlist and how nobody seems to really get why I did it, I'm thinking about deleting all of those videos and just keeping the long play and the review up and then this. Which then begs the question, am I going to play this? A full let's play of both possible and impossible difficulty. And... If I were to guess, I would say the interest is not there, so I'm probably just gonna do possible and move on. Let's go punch Barnes. He's not supposed to be dead, he doesn't die in the movie, right? What's up, Robert Barnes? What happened to you? Oh, the gullets and masters in the hallway. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody reads that stuff. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I wasn't sure you were really dead, pal. All right, we got to get the face maker again, because once again, that's what this game revolves around. And it works very well. Um, if I haven't said it already, I think I did. Didn't I open up saying that... Um, it's kind of like the same fun factor as Goldeneye, these very short missions that you could just have tons of replay value. Watch this camera. Do not grab the video thing on the table if this camera is facing... Got it! Yeah, you gotta watch him, have his back turned to you, and make sure the camera is away from you. And now we're good to go talk to the chief of security and take his face. What's up, chum? Good evening, officer. What brings you here, comrade Vlasov, or whatever his name is? How are the Americans? Yeah, nobody cares. Uh, bookcase looks strange? Yeah! So wait for this guy's back to turn, grab the dark gun, Got and it. knock him out. Got it. Gotcha! <laughs> Every time. So you hit the little yellow thing, and then the button, and then drag the body like a cartoon behind the desk. It doesn't get old, man. Is This is just like there's little morsels of fun here, and it's just so fun to replay. And this animation, too. I remember I loved being this particular character when I was a kid. Alright, now these guys, just take them out. Use the silent gun, not the high-powered pistol. Because otherwise the alarm will go off. Freeze the video with the video freezer. Grab the escape key. There, that's better. Copy. Stay close. <laughs> Alright, let's go get the transfer order that was just wired because of the cameras. Phelps wired this transfer, so just talk to this guy. Yeah, yeah. And then we gotta give this to the dude in the jail cell so that we can get Candace. I would read the text, but it really doesn't matter that much. You get the gist of it. There's very few lines that are funny, so. There's a lot of jokes about the bad coffee, though. I think uh, Candace here says something about bad coffee. Yeah, I used a face maker on the dude. Yeah, they're doping my food with making her weaker than daytime television. They say something similar about the coffee, too. But I think that's in Mission 3. So we just run down here with a little key card that we got, and we gotta wait for Candace, otherwise I won't let you. There she is. Now it should work. Now! Deeper into Mission 2, this is the security hallway. We gotta get towards this supercomputer and get the NOC list back. As the briefing said on the airplane. Take this gun, Candace, even though it has all kinds of ammo that I wish I could just have. The cheats of this game are a lot of fun to play with too. You can have every weapon, infinite ammo. Cheats are always fun. Talk to Candace so she triggers the little floor panel routine here. On impossible difficulty, this place is brutal. Well, once again, the GameCube controller is working in my favor. I should have shot him before I jumped. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those games where you can move in midair. So jump first and then hold the control stick at maximum. Uh, press? I don't know what word I'm looking for there. You're done, buddy. Yeah, very basic, very clunky, but it's enjoyable. If you know what you're doing and you're just kind of revisiting it for the nostalgia, it's fun. Because <laughs> of lines like that. And once again, the music is phenomenal. That is the only reason, really, that I'm replaying this. Pressing this button always triggers the Mission Impossible theme. So get ready for copyrights. 
Whatever, though. Alright, this level. This one, people might remember as getting stuck in here. I remember I never liked this level, and I still don't, but... Given the rest of the game and the nature of how things work, it's tolerable. You just gotta watch your jumps. Like, why is there a toxic slime pool underneath a... mansion? <laughs> I don't know. With a supercomputer in it. We don't question these things. But yeah, the first part is part of this mission is just running to these consoles and pressing A to lower these platforms because the last console opens the door to the super com computer and then we got to backtrack this guy you got to be super quick dude come on there we go if I was just a second slower he probably would have arrested Candace and that's mission failure impossible difficulty gives you even less time so you got to be really quick with your aim guy right here and one in the door. I always crouch, kill him because it's fun. Something about little animations that just feel satisfying. Like, I used to like the crouch animation of Trevlin in GoldenEye 007 in the facility when he would crouch and shoot up at the door when Aramoff and all those guys would come in. Just something about crouching down and shooting as a kid. I thought it was like the coolest animation because I'm stupid. Yeah, way to go! Yeah, way to go. Alright, last guard, last console. Here we go. Now this mission gets really dangerous. Three minutes, you have even less time if we're playing on impossible. And now guards just start spawning out of thin air. Specifically to arrest Candace. So you gotta stay close to her. She's all drugged out of her mind too, so she's moving super slow. So that's why I'm just kind of hanging back and making sure she's visible before I go to the moving platform up here. Alright, she should be right there, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Now there's a surprise guard. They're going to get me, Ethan. Wait, what? Yeah, this guy always comes to get her, but wait, no, she's in trouble. Dude, do not. Do not. That guard usually does not appear. That was weird. This game has a lot of stuff like that. Just weird things that just happen that make missions unbeatable in some cases. There's weird glitches in code. Although, according to my long play and my review, a lot of people commented that their cartridge had, had no problems, but... Every single time, no matter what I, however I played this game, whether it was actual on an actual cartridge or an emulator, I've run into all kinds of programming glitches that make missions, you have to abort the mission and try again. It's just very rough around the edges. Yeah, that guy you definitely want to get to first because he will arrest Candace almost instantly. So that's one of those missions that's kind of more irritating than anything else. Now we get to the good songs, finally, more good music. This is the escape track. I like this one a lot. So coming back through the security hallway, you just gotta hit these little ceiling turrets. As soon as you see C1, you don't even have to aim up because there is not one in the C1 corridor. So this should be the last one. Now do not press the computer yourself. It'll kill Candace. She's the tech savvy one, so she has to come here. Let's go, lady. There's that music again. I just love the, all the little, like, punches that you can't hear on the N64. <laughs> it's Natalia! That stock sound effect of just a woman screaming. Here's the Glitzen mask. So we gotta do what Robert Barnes failed to do and make it look like Glitzen's fault. Oh, come on, accuracy. Gotta watch my ammo. Crap, I gotta use the dark gun. One of these guards drops ammo for the other guy. Now, this is the trickiest part of this mission. Get ready to shoot him. This guy comes running out. Yeah, he's done. He's got the NOC list. 
but he goes and runs and hides and this mission can be a lot more difficult if he gets away from you. It's tough on impossible regardless. But some of the missions are more fun on impossible. It's kind of, once again, just like Goldeneye, how a lot of those missions are more fun to play on double O agent because you have more objectives and you explore more of the level and do more things. Once again, you hear that? That's not on the N64 track. Every cop in this hallway drops ammo. <laughs> I like how these guys attack you with fire extinguishers. Got it. Got it. Yes. There, that's better. Now on Impossible, I fail this mission so many times because you have to destroy the cameras and I always forget because on Possible, you do not have to do that. And so I complete every objective and escape, and then all of a sudden it shows a cutscene of Candace and Ethan getting tied up and thrown in jail because I didn't destroy the cameras, so it's mission failure. So unfreeze the video, and before you step out where the cameras are live, put on the Galitzin mask, and now you have three minutes, 30 seconds before they find you out. But until then, they believe it's Galitzin who's betraying Moscow or whatever the whole story is here. What are you doing, chum? <laughs> that is definitely not the angle in which I shot him. Oh, I love these old school animations. Shoot him in the shoulder from the side and he dives forward. But that guy's got the key to escape and that is the final objective on possible. Now, just because I've failed the mission going through this door so many times, I always try to just clear all guards so that, uh, nobody watches me take off the mask because it forces you to when you use the key. I think we're good. But I think what, well, like I said, I think what triggers the mission failure is the fact that the cameras spot you take off the mask. I don't think lingering guards matter, but maybe they do. And this is it, the final mission of mission two, the embassy function thing. The fire escape, fire alarm, I think it's called. Cool music too. And Candace is finally not drugged out of her mind, so she runs full speed, but she's still got a protector to get to the elevator. So run ahead and do not shoot Candace in the head. I've done that before. All right, she's good. As soon as you take out that guy, she's got a clear passage. Now we gotta find Jack, the guy dressed up as a fireman. He's the only black dude of the firemen. Yeah, meet him in the bathrooms for fire suits. Let's do it. There's a lot of weird liberties that they took with this game that do not fall in line with the actual movie. Like the character Luther, I think they did something weird with him, but I forget. That's not until Mission 4. What I was gonna say is I don't think Jack is black in the movie. And so, I don't know, there is something weird like that in this game and the movie. There's a... But there we go, we got the suits and we got one for Candace. We gotta go get her out of the elevator and give it to her. And there you go. And whenever you complete a mission from the very first stage all the way to the end, without mission failure or dying, you unlock a cheat. And I replayed this mission so much as a kid, just going around, pretending to be a fireman, extinguishing the smoke alarms in the vent. Why do I keep saying alarms? There's smoke generators. Get out of here, buddy. I think if he sees you give this to Candace, you might get arrested. There are aspects of this song that sound better on the N64, actually, like this part of it. But overall, it's still much better quality in what I thought was the uncompressed tracks, but later learned that they just redid them for the PlayStation 1. Although that can't be the case with the Embassy Piano song because that wasn't used in the PlayStation game, which instantly makes the N64 that much better because that song is amazing. But there you go. Missions 1 and 2 are done. Not too much more game left. And there's the code. It's the high power pistol that we used for the majority of that mission. You just input it on the, uh, the main menu screen, the stage select screen. So next time, CIA Escape. See you then.